This is the Milo Beasley Show. This is the Milo Beasley Show. There's only one thing you need to know. This is the Milo Beasley Show. And now, here's your host, Milo Beasley. And welcome to the Milo Beasley Show. Do, 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 do. Episode number 359. Uh, Halloween fans, Hocus Pocus fans, I know you'll be happy uh, for this week's episode. So please help me welcome with this time. You may remember him as the mortal bus boy. Please help me welcome Don Yeso. How are you doing? Just fine, man. Just fine. Listen, I'm uh, if I seem I don't know where to look, this is my first podcast. So uh, <laughs> you may have to forgive me. Well, I'm 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 happy to have you on. You're looking you're looking right at me. You're looking right at me. So okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Good. So uh, uh, again, you, you talk about it being your your first podcast. Um, it's been 29 years since Hocus Pocus. Did you think that here you are, 29 years later, still talking about that movie? No, you know, as uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I mean, it. Um, you know. It, if anybody tells you, or if you do any other people on your podcast that say, oh, I knew this thing was going to be a hit, they're a goddamn liar. Um, <laughs> nobody in their wildest dream. First of all, I mean, it came out to horrible reviews. It came out in the middle of the summer. It was a flop at the box office. Michael Osner was in the hot seat, who was the president of Disney at the time. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, uh, lurid details that your listeners probably would be interested in, but... Um, Listen to all these uh, girls being kumbaya about Hocus Pocus too. That's not exactly what I remember. Uh, oh. I upset. So, uh, but once again, you know, I'm just, it's 29 years ago. They probably would go, I didn't say that. So, you know, we'll just let it go like that. My point is, is that nobody, nobody, including the three girls, thought that this would do what it did. Um, so, um, you know, I, and I'm just, and I didn't realize that uh, this thing had taken a leg of its own till just a few years ago. Um, uh, and uh, somebody said, um, you know, she get on the internet, you know, it's just like three or four years ago during COVID. Right. And uh, she get on the internet and reach out to some people. And, you know, I heard that they're going to release Hocus Pocus a lot, you know, because a lot of people at home. So I said, okay. So I posted a picture. Um, I don't have it on me right now, but it's a Polaroid. You know, back back then, 29 years ago, before we had phones, you know, the digital phones and everything, right. to do continuity in a movie, you would need to take these Polaroids and, right. you know, and they would hang them around their neck. And that's how costumes, wardrobes, set, everybody knew what continuity was. So we were finished. It was about six o'clock in the morning. The sun was coming up. I was on my way to do uh, do a soap opera with Lisa Renner. I forget the name of it. Um, anyway. Uh, I was on my way going straight from there to NBC Studios to, to work all day long on a soap opera. And I, you know, and so the girls were getting on. They said, oh, you know, it's freezing. It's cold. You know, bye, bye, bye. I said, hey, hold on a second. Let me pop a picture with that Polaroid. She goes, the wardrobe goes, oh, okay. So she popped it. So it's the only picture that exists of me and the three girls together. Uh, and I just kept it all these years. So about three years ago, I downloaded it on my computer and I put it on this Hocus Pocus website. Well, gee, oh, Lord, and behold, Man, it was like 20,000 likes within 24 hours and, you know, like 2,000 comments and shares. I was like, wow. I literally had a wow moment. Um, and then I realized, I said, wow, there's something here. So I started this whole Mortal Bus Boy fan page. And uh, this past year, I started doing conventions. And uh, the reception that I get uh, at these conventions is pure. It's real. It's a wholesome. It's organic. It's uh, it's it's terrific, man. I mean, it just uh, some of these women who are like 30, 32, 33, who grew up on this movie, they literally just start shaking and just, oh it's just such. I mean, come on, you know, right. it, it's just it's a unique experience. I mean, um, and like I said, I've led you through the whole journey uh, and uh, and the answer, you know, the short answer would have been no. Right. But that give, I tried to fill in with you what I went through, the process I went through. That uh, that's incredible, and uh, you know there are a, a lot of uh, great characters in the movie. But I mean, you had some of the most iconic lines that 
you know, didn't come out of the three girls' mouths. Uh, you know, like, um, you know, uh, it may take me a couple uh, turns. You know, you know, maybe yeah, you know. So, uh, I mean, it's one of the most iconic lines in the whole movie, and and, and yeah. you got to, you know. But you know, the thing is, is that what people don't realize is that <clears throat> I didn't make that one up. But the thing is, is that probably half the dialogue in there, I just improvise on the spot. Uh, oh wow! You know the whole thing with Bette Midler when she's going, "That was what it's," uh, you know, uh, and I said party poop and all. That was all ad lib. All of that was completely ad lib. Um, you know, the, I need a chemical instant ice packs. You girls are giving me a fever. I mean, I just ad libbed all of that stuff because it was there was time. We were getting on a bus. It was just space, right? So I would just start talking the whole spitting the gum thing out. It was all, all that I just, all, I was chewing gum and I realized I had it in my mouth in the middle of the scene and just went, and I spit it out the bus and the director loved it. So I had to chew gum in between every take after that. Um, <laughs> so it was just so improvised um, that, uh, you know, I was writing lines on the back of an envelope in between rehearsals and, um, and they used, they used almost every, I think they used every one of them. I don't believe there's any lines that I came up with that they cut. Um, you know, and the thing is, is that, you know, think about this. He's only in one scene, basically. Right. But the best way I can... Did you ever see Moonstruck? Yes, I, I have it's, seen it. I can't remember but, too much about it, but I have no, seen but it. Just, he was only in one scene. Right. But the thing is, is that that's all everybody was talking about after Moonstruck, was oh, how right. the story was going to be. And what's funny is that... I, it, not that I'm, you know, Nick's caliber. Well, I know Nick very well. But uh, I'm just saying that one scene from a movie, and it's iconic. You know, it's... Uh, you know, it's that same sort of thing. Of course, Nick and I's career took two, 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 two different routes. But anyway, um, the uh, you know, it's that it's that sort of thing. But, you know, he's only in one scene. But you would think the way people react to him, he was in a, a lot of the movie. Um, right. Absolutely. And um, so, uh, you know, I'll forever be known as Mortal Bus Boy. And I and I love it. I accept it. I wear it. You know, people. I, I read about a lot of these people saying, oh, I wish, you know, I'm so tired of hearing about I was Superman or whatever. You know, I love it. I, I I wear it like a coat of armor. You know, I just, that's it. You know, I, I even wear a butts hat to conventions. You know, I mean, I, I get all out, you know. Um, so, uh, look, I'm in the third act of my life. And basically, I'm going to ride this thing and enjoy the hell out of it as long as I can. So. How is the the reception that I've seen online has been incredible, uh, but how have have you, obviously have how have you felt it and seen um, the the people that who were longing for a return of Mortal Bus Boy in the second movie? Yeah, you know the thing is is that I'm not gonna. I don't. You know. I. I. I you know. I've I've answered this question many times, and I don't want to sound bitter. You know, and I don't want I, I, I guess the best thing I can say is I'm sad that uh, that I didn't put him in there. But then I just read a thing about before before I got on with you, I just read about Ralph Macchio was talking about how Will Smith did a reboot of The Karate Kid. And he was talking about how sad he was that none of the original members when the, the, the new Karate Kid, right. which was, takes place 34 years later. And uh, he said to ask him, he said, listen, if you'd like to be in the movie, you're more welcome. Ralph was like, no, that's. You know, if that's if that's the way you're going to ask me. No, I, I don't want to be in a movie. Now, I wasn't even asked. But the thing is, is I believe only three people, four people from the original movie were in this movie. Um, you know, and once again, I don't want to sound bitter um, because I'm not. It, but here's here's what now this isn't my idea. This is what some of the fangirls have given me through uh, correspondence is that Disney could have made a whole game of it. You know, I mean, I were all about merchandising and right. and things like that. They could have put every one of the original cast members in once in a scene, and you got to find out where they are. I mean, just right. anything. I mean, they got you know they do hocus pocus Lego do. I mean, hocus pocus tarot cards came out. I'm the knight of lightning, by the way. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a tarot card. Um, you know, so uh, they uh, you know I'm I'm a keychain. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen all of it. That stuff. I mean, it's just you know. So how can somebody that's a keychain not be in the, in part two? I have no idea. But you know what? That's for smarter people than me to figure out. And once again, not better, a little sad. But but the the, re the reception, the the people 
that were actually clamoring for you, that has to make you feel a little bit good. Oh, absolutely. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying is that this, it's a moral victory after a loss, put it right. that way. Right. It's, uh, you know, it's like we played hard. Listen, they started a petition for me uh, online. They sent, and I know it was sent to the director and um, there was just crickets from him. You know, I reached out to him several times, even when I realized I wasn't in the movie, I was in Salem while they were filming the movie. And he said, he was in Salem. I said, hey, listen, if you'd like to have a drink, I'll be up there for a week. Never heard from him. Uh, you know, which is fine. You know, like I said, I, I had, I had, well, I didn't have a good time in Salem because of the weather, but I enjoyed <laughs> myself visiting Salem. I mean, well, I came in, do you know, wh where do you live? Where are I you? I live in Orlando. Okay. Well, so we have hurricanes here, right? Right. They have nor'easters up there, which is a hurricane. They just call them with that different name. Right. Well, I landed the day a nor'easter followed me right into Boston. Oh. So for a whole week I was in the middle of a nor'easter. Uh, so uh, that was my, but I didn't care. I went out my, I didn't have any rain gear. I just went out my trench coat and I just, I got soaking wet and I looked at all the witches graves and, you know, I just made the best of it. So, so. you get to do kind of like a touristy, you have to be a tourist while yeah, well, there was nobody there. So I got to see everything pretty easy, you know, <laughs> cause it was raining. Oh, it was, it was raining. Yeah, everyone is inside. Oh, yeah. that's so, no, you know, like, you know, all of the graves. Have you ever been to Salem? I have not, but I uh, try to do the same thing whenever I go and, and work comic conventions and, and those things. I love to get in a day early and, and go see right. Uh, right. the sites and stuff like that. So right. the fact that you went and did that, uh, I I absolutely love. Yeah, no, I, I did it all. Walk the walk. I went and saw where the witches were supposedly buried. You know, I did it all, you know. So, and it was freezing cold, but the thing is, is that the, the, the tours were empty. There was nobody out there. So, so I enjoyed myself in the midst of a hurricane, uh, but I'm used to hurricanes. So, you know. Uh, absolutely. So where, where are you, where are you uh, based out of? I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana now. Oh, uh, I was born and raised in New Orleans. And the ironic thing too, as I just read, is that I saw with Mark Wahlberg, they did a piece on Mark Wahlberg's leaving Hollywood and how all the other people, I did that 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I, I, I realized it wasn't a place to raise kids or family. So, you know, 20 years ago, I moved back home here to Baton Rouge. Well, I'm from New Orleans, right. but uh, I went to school here in Baton Rouge so at LSU. So LSU. I just decided to come back here when my son was little and I raised him here. Now I'm reading, it's like, now it's the thing to do. It's like, yeah, just 20 years late. That's all. Uh, <laughs> But, um, you know, you know, Hollywood at the time, it was a place to be, you know, if you were in the uh, industry or the trade. Well, now that everything is so dispersed, I mean, when I came home in 2014, actually, was my best year ever as an actor. I mean, I did the most body of work I've ever done, not the best projects, but I did the most amount of work I, in 2014 because of the film industry here in Louisiana. So it's it's very decentralized now, so you can work out of anywhere. You know, Orlando uh, does a lot of productions there. Right. So, uh, I'm going to be in Orlando. Yeah, in I was going to say, uh, in uh, January, House of Mouse Expo, uh, you're going to be there, a, a gigantic Hocus Pocus reunion. Uh, well, you know, it's the first time they've ever had, didn't mean to interrupt you, yeah. uh, it's the first time that many, I think, I could be wrong with this, but that many people from the cast have been in one area to do a panel and autographs. Yep. Now they've had a Pocus Pocus reunion on TV at NBC shot, but it was just right. nobody on stage. Ain't nobody answered questions. Nobody did autographs. It was just a, a, a you know an hour special on TV. But I think this is the most people ever. It's going to be ever at, in one room at one time that are accessible. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, for. Uh, folks in the Orlando area, or if you're coming to the Orlando area, it's a great time. It's January. The weather, it's uh, the best it's ever going to be in Florida. Uh, uh, it's going to be, uh, It's it, all the information can be found at houseofmouseexpo.com. Uh, but yeah, a, a ton of uh, folks from uh, Hocus Pocus uh, will be there. Uh, I think we're up so. to nine right now, and I'm hearing a rumor that Kathy and the Jimmy may be there as well, and Thora Birch also. Oh. So if they could possibly land those two, I've been talking to Michelle. She's a she's a little she's a little pit bull. She's the um, she's the um, what do you call them things? Not the creator, the not the organizer, the uh, promoter. Oh she's yeah, the promoter. Yeah. And um, I told her, I said, you know, if you if you land those two, it is a shot, a small shot. If you play your cards right and come up with a nice charity for Sarah Jessica, she'd probably show up. She probably wouldn't do autographs, but she might just show up. But yeah, so, uh, uh, Jason Marston, uh, who is uh, right. Zachary Binks, 
Vanessa Shaw, uh, Omari Katz, um, uh, Larry Bagby is going to be there. Uh, uh, Doug Jones is going to be there. So it's going to be a ton of people. So Hocus Pocus fans, uh, Orlando fans, you have to be uh, at House of Mouse. And also, too, uh, from what I understand, the VIP tickets are almost sold out. Expecting 50,000 people. Um, so in the VIP ticket seat, when this panel, they've even expanded the panel time. Last year was only an hour. And because it was such a big hit, they're doing it for an hour and a half this year. However, you know, VIP tickets get in first, but once, once the seats are filled, that's it. And I got news for you. There are going to be a lot more people standing outside than inside because <laughs> right. I think this thing is going to be huge. I really do. I, I, um, and I, I don't even know why I'm saying it. I just got a feeling that just uh, it's being, you know, most of these conventions that I go to are labeled as uh, horror conventions and stuff like that. Right. When people find out of that, they freak out. Well, now that people know the Hocus Pocus, gonna, people are going to be in and that's the reason why they're coming. Right. I just got a funny feeling this thing is just going to be nuts. Absolutely. Now, are you going to uh, be there? Do what? Are you going to be there? I actually have another uh, convention. Oh, uh, wow. That same weekend. Uh, it's breaking my heart uh, that I won't be there. There's a, a, a lot of other uh, great guests going to be there. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Barry Gibbs, uh, is going to be there. And, of course, I, I love uh, I love uh, Jason Marsden. He's great. Uh, Irene Bedard, the voice of Pocahontas. Brett right. Iwin, the voice of Mickey Mouse. All going to be there. Uh, it's good. That's it's it's definitely going to be a fun time, and I'm heartbroken. I'm going to be missing it, but I will be having a, a ton of fun at my show as well. So, uh, but which, which show are you going to that you're missing this for? Uh, there's a show. I unfortunately also in the Central Florida area called Central Florida Comic Con that same weekend. So uh, maybe people can split between Saturdays and Sundays and go <laughs> from one to the other. Um, but yes, so I will. I will still be in the area. I will just be at a, another show about a, an hour or so down the road. It's tough being wanted. You know, every <laughs> once in a while, uh, these uh, these shows end up uh, crossing paths, and uh, it's uh, you know I have to make choices. But uh, I'm sure the same thing happens happens to you. And I, I do have a question about conventions, and that is when you were there, and, and people are there to see you uh, for Hocus Pocus. Do they look at your banner or look at your eight by tens and, and go, wait a minute, I I do remember you from Fantastic Four, or I I do remember you from uh from Days of Our Lives. I do remember you from Bad Countries. Do, do you get that response as well? Not not much, because uh, to be honest with you, I, I mean, if I'm I'm just being perfectly honest with you. Once they realize I'm Mortal Bus Boy, it's like they go blank. <laughs> it's like a vapor lock. That's all they can think about, you know, and. Um, you know, they'll go like, I mean, what else you been? I mean, what was it like with Sarah Jessica? You know, it's like they can't get their questions out fast enough. Right. And uh, it's, um, you know, it, it's funny. And some people go, have you done anything else? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I've done 58 films, but other than that, not much. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, do you, um, you've done uh, television, you've done stage, you've done soap opera, you've done movies. Do you have a... A particular genre that you enjoy doing more than than the others? Actually, you know, I enjoy, I enjoyed the stage immensely. Um, you know, I, I, I do want to say, uh, anytime I ask that question, uh, I would say ninety percent of people who have done stage say that they enjoy really? stage. Well, you know, the thing is, is that is that uh, you get the instant gratification from the audience, and the thing is, is that. Uh, I don't know. There's a certain connection and you have to, you can't mail it in because you have to talk to the last row, yeah. you know, no matter how many people in the theater, you got to talk to the back row. So you can't just walk in there and just say, ah, blah, 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 mumble your lines. You got to really get into it. So it, it makes you, uh, it makes you adrenaline kick. And that's the best way I can describe it. Problem is, is there's no money in it and there's no real good venues unless you're in New York. Right. So, um that's the only downside of it you know like uh you know i'm not sure sure after being on broadway if i get the same sort of juice from playing the baton rouge little theater so is but that, you yeah. know stage is a stage uh and, but you know the thing is though is that and the, and the play's got to be right um of course you know um so you know i, I i've been blessed with the, the few times i've been on stage i've had some really great characters to play so i, I was blessed with that but i would probably say 
Uh, second would be, I actually enjoy TV more than films. Okay. Yeah, it seems that it um, it's it's not the same uh, monotonous do thirty four takes on a, on a, on a, right. uh, on a scene, you know, because you're on a time constraint. So you either nail it or you don't. So it forces you to be on your toes a little bit more. You know, I, you know, I just don't understand these actors. You know, like I hear about like Joaquin Phoenix, you know, does like fifty takes. I just don't know how he keeps keeps his focus for fifty takes. But you know, who's to argue with? Him? He's he's phenomenal. My hat is off to that guy. He's just brilliant. You know, or maybe he's crazy. One of the two. <laughs> well, but, uh, one of the two. Uh, so I have to ask. I mean, you you're in incredible shape. You still got that six pack going on down there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, and I'm not going to be humble about it. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> so what do you do? I mean, look, what do you do to to stay to stay in shape? You know, you know the thing is, is that now once again, I'm not going to be humble. I get asked that question every day, every single day. I got guys your age coming up to me in the gym every day. I had two guys come up to me today and ask me in the gym. One guy was six foot four, about two thirty. He goes, right, should I do shoulders or chest first? You don't know me, you know, just, you know, they just look at me. And um, uh, he, the only answer I can come up with that I can figure, I walked in the gym when I was 14 years old when nobody else was going to gyms. I mean, and, you know, they still had like plastic waste in the, the machine that did all of this with you and the rolling. So nobody, and I, I never walked out. I've been in the gym all, all my life. And that's the only thing I contribute to is that my body got so acclimated to working out that it doesn't know how to go any other direction oh. so I, I don't know I, for lack of a better answer i don't even know if that's right but you know i was a personal trainer before there was ever such a thing as a personal trainer before it was right. even a time. you know you have guys come up to you and go hey can you show me how to do this but well, it's what a personal trainer does you know and that was 40 years ago so uh uh you know but uh yeah i'm just lucky uh i i don't i don't eat like I like sweets, you know, I like carrot cake and stuff like that. I just, you know, like I said, I'm in the third act. So I gotta, gotta back off of that stuff, you know? So there's some discipline and self deprecation uh, defra, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when you, I don't know, like just, you know, watching what I eat, right. Uh, self deprivation. Um, and uh, I just got checked for Alzheimer's. I don't have Alzheimer's. I just, <laughs> the guy goes, and says, I got bad news for you. Tell your wife you don't have Alzheimer's. The problem is you got ADD really bad. Wow. Well. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, that was an interesting test, by the way. If you ever get a chance to take one, you should take it. Take right. it about four hours to take it, but uh, I don't know how we're going to that something. But anyway. <laughs> uh, so a thing I want to do now is, uh, is, what we call the Milo Beasley show frequently asked questions. These are going to be the same five questions that I asked to all my guests. Uh, they're pretty easy questions. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, question number one, what was the first concert you ever attended? I was really fortunate because we had a thing called the warehouse in New Orleans and the guy who promoted was a promoter would get all these great bands in there. And it was just happening, you know, and no, no other place but New Orleans had this. So I used to go see concerts all the time. And I'm trying to think of the first one I ever went to. I'm going to say probably, do you remember a band called Humble Pie? I do. I think that was the first one I've ever been to. That's a cool concert to go to. House. And uh, yeah, I mean, they weren't known at the time. Right. But it that's was the uh, that's the best part about it. Yeah, you, none, most of these bands were not. I mean, I think I've seen like uh, I, I sat on the stage with Robin Trower because uh, there was nobody else in the concert. So I just jumped up on the stage and just at the end, and just listened to Robin Trower play. Now, you know, these are people that are all dead. That you, you, you probably uh, your listeners don't know who they are. But, um, you know, I saw Led Zeppelin three times, uh, Alice Cooper four times, uh, Grand Funk Railroad. I don't know if you remember them. Um, I do. Uh, when they were huge, I saw them in like a gym, a, a high school gymnasium. They played at a gymnasium. So, you know, and I mean, they went on to just have the, all of these huge records. Um, so the guy, the Don Fox was his name, was a promoter. And he discovered ZZ Top. And he, he so he had the opportunity to bring a lot of these unknown bands into New Orleans. So I got to see a lot of things. I think it was Humble Pie. And I went on with somebody else, but I can't remember who it was. That was great. Uh, question number two, do you believe in ghosts? 
No. No. Ooh, a lot of people on the on the show say that they that they do or they believe something is out there. So it's uh it's it's refreshing to hear somebody just well, I I don't talk religion or politics, so let's leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. Uh question number three, in a twist on a comic question, in a story about your life, who would have played your parents? Gotta be the Costanzas. George I love it. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if anybody remembers them from Seinfeld. But... I, I, yeah, I mean, they're just, uh, yeah, George's parents are, God, right. what a great answer. What a great yeah. answer. Uh, question number four, who was your first celebrity crush? I know who it is. I'm trying to remember her name. She played, she played Gidget. Uh, in like Bridget goes to Hawaii or Bridget goes to Orlando. Uh, she, she, Sandra D. Oh, Sandra D. Sandra D. Good one too. She was, was she Gidget? She was Gidget, right? I think sounds that sounds familiar. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? She was with Bobby Darren or maybe one of. Yes. yes. Okay. Nineteen fifty nine. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that was right. Because I was, I'd go to the Happy Hour Theater and watch all these double features, and I just sit there and go, God, I wish she was my girlfriend. <laughs> And then uh, our last question, question number five, uh, it's it's definitely one that I always enjoy asking, especially people in the entertainment industry. And that, has there been a moment where you were uh, in on studio, on set, um, filming, where you fanboyed out and you saw somebody who you, you tried speaking to and the words couldn't come out of your mouth, or you couldn't stop talking, you know, and you, you made a fool out of yourself. Has, did, any, any of those moments uh, with, with any other celebrities or actors or singers? Yeah, it's, it, it's happened a couple of times, uh, you know, if you, if you want to hear the incident. Absolutely. First with Sylvester Stallone, when I worked with Sylvester Stallone, and uh, we worked on Bullet to the Head. So, you know, I was sitting outside the bar where we were working, and here comes Rocky. I mean, Rocky. I mean, Jesus, yeah. how many more eggs I ate for Rocky and running to that music, you know, when I was in college. So he sits down. Here's my mom. We had a scene together, but, you know, we didn't, there wasn't much talk. He's very quiet. And uh, I said, well, here's my moment. Well, I start talking to him. And about five minutes later, he turns around like this. I don't know if you can see me. Yeah. Takes his hand, pats me on the back, goes, hey, you know what? You talk a lot. And he goes to get up. I said, you know what, pal? You stay there. You were here first. I'm leaving. <laughs> Fuck you. And I walked off. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, but I guess I was so excited to meet him. I just was just like had diarrhea to mouth. Right. And the other time was I was uh, speechless. It's just the opposite. I did a movie called Blast from the Past with Christopher Walken. Yes. He is. Is a guy that's larger than life, right? I mean, just I tried to imitate talking like him, it's impossible. And uh, he was so we were going through the buffet line at work and uh, in between the scenes. And um, I said, Man, Mr. Walken, I said, I'm just a huge fan of yours. He and he just looks at me and he stares at me and he turns to the food and he goes, Tuna fish, and he walks off. And I'm like, the fuck am I supposed to do with that? I just told the guy I was a huge fan. Is he tells me tuna fish? I was I didn't know what to say. I, I mean I didn't even made eye contact with the guy for the rest of the week. <laughs> I just what do you do with that? And then he walked off. It's now my goal to somehow <laughs> incorporate that into a conversation in my lifetime. Yeah. <sighs> I mean it's just you know you just so that, that was that was the two you know probably. You know, and, it, you know, I've got a chance to work with a lot of women. You know, I just, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember the first Top Gun when it, when it came out. Um, remember Kelly McGillis? She yeah, played I do, Charlie. of course. So I was doing my very first TV series called Frank's Place. And we were shooting at uh, the Culver City Studios. And uh, she was, you know, Top Gun was in our movie theaters playing. Well, she was on set. She was doing this movie called Winter People, horrible film, by the way, with Kurt Russell. So she's in a cafeteria. So I walk on up to, I mean, I've been in Hollywood maybe three months and here's Charlie walking down the line. Right. And I said, 
So we get to the cashier and she had a fried egg sandwich. I said, I said, put my food on in that whatever she's got. And I didn't even look at it. And I paid for it. And um, I walked off trying to be as cool as a cucumber. Of course. Well, I see these two white shoes walk up to my table. I'm looking down. And she goes, I guess you paid for my breakfast. I guess I'm going to have to sit and eat with you now. We dated for a year. So. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. So as a matter of fact, when. Uh, yeah. Uh, st- I said, it's a fact that most people. Well, you know, if you're around at that time, I mean, we were in People Magazine. We were in all the gossip columns and stuff like that. Matter of fact, I got a, um, I still got the article. I, I was telling somebody about the other day. You no, know, Top Gun just came out, the, the new yeah. one. And um, so we were doing a celebrity golf tournament up in New York because she lived in New York and I'd fly out to go see her. And she was sitting on my lap and all the paparazzi were there and everything, taking pictures. And man, the Star Magazine came out the next week. There's a new Top Gun in Kelly McGillis's life and it's Don Yeso. So me, Tom Cruise, been uh, the two Top Guns in Charlie's life. <laughs> Incredible. So yeah. it just goes to show you, everybody who's uh, who's watching, who's listening, buy the breakfast buy <laughs> and, the... and don't even say anything don't look for thank you nothing right. hey just, it buy, works. just be cool buy off. the breakfast and walk away i walk off and uh of course it was quite an adventure that yeah but that's a story for another day but well, that's uh, going to be about our time um i had oh, so okay. much fun uh, i would absolutely love to do it again but for uh for folks who want to follow you on social medias uh, find out where you're going to be. Uh, where where can folks find you at? I'm on, uh, I think on Instagram, just on Don Yes. So you plug that in. And if you go to uh, uh, Mortal Bus Boy uh, on Facebook, I'm also on Facebook on the Mortal Bus Boy or Don Yes. So bus driver, any one of those things will lead you to my link page. Um, awesome. I do videos every once in a while, and you know, people get a kick out of that and I do free giveaways. Listen, if I was too verbose on your show, I apologize, but uh, I, no, no, I loved it. I loved it. You got to get on Cameo next. That Cameo is your next thing, you know. Uh, well, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but people have been telling me for five years, I have no idea. So, all right, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I, I absolutely enjoyed myself, and again, House of Mouse Expo.com. Uh, uh, Don will be there along with many other Hocus Pocus guests. Thank you all for watching, listening, wherever you are. And uh, That's we'll see you. Am I interrupting you again? Yes, yep. I am. Yes, I am. But I got something I wanted to tell you. All right. I'll tell you something. I've done, you know, the talk shows, get gauntlet, okay? I've been interviewed by everybody, including Johnny Carson three times, okay? And I'm going to tell you what, you're very good at your job. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Very, very humbling. Thank you so much. Uh...